road. This morning I woke up and I just had the biggest hankering for a fish taco. So what I decided to do was jump in the truck, head down to the coast, and we're gonna go do a little jetty fishing today. The goal is to go out and catch a couple black rock bass, fry them up out there on the jetty itself, and make us a couple delicious little fish tacos. I'm gonna do like a little street taco thing. So thanks so much for joining us today. We're gonna go out on an adventure. We're gonna start crawling some big rocks and go face to face with the Pacific Ocean and Mother Nature and see if we can't get a tasty little meal out of it. Once again, if you guys haven't already done so, go down here, smash that thumbs up, drop a comment below with whether or not you are hungry for a fish taco right now and stick with us. We're gonna have an adventure today. So a little disclaimer for you guys, I've actually never jetty fished off of this jetty before. But really I just took some insight from some buddies, you know, I talked to Marlon a little bit about it, I guess he used to fish down here a lot. And I'm just totally winging it today. Uh, grabbed a few things that I know work for rock bass. We got some salmon gear we brought along too in case we get the rockfish right away, we can try to catch a couple salmon. Um, but I'm totally winging it, you know, I got a, a backpack full of gear, some good aspiration, I got my trusty partner up here. Man, there's nothing like hanging out on the ocean in the summertime. Wind in your hair, salty smell in the air, fishy things all around. Finally hit the jetty. We're going to start walking. And what I was told is the further the better. So I'm going to be Mr. Badass here and try to go as far out as I possibly can and start giving her hell. Hopefully I don't lose too much gear. Hopefully we catch some lunch. Okay, it's starting to become a fishy situation out here. I'm basically I'm just gonna try to get to the very end of the spit and then work my way all the way back. But I finally hit that breaking line, that foam line out there in the ocean. This side's all big calm, the Columbia River. But I wanna be fishing the ocean side, I was told, so I'm gonna try both. I'm gonna go down here, get rigged up, get all the way at the end of the spit and then start fishing, see how it goes. Man, look at how cool these rocks are in here. It's like it's, they're all jasper or something. I'm not sure where they come from. But I'm sure they get these rocks from all over the place. But man, some of them as I'm walking through here, got a bunch of like crystals and stuff marbled into them. It's super beautiful like this one. Look how green this is. Green rock, crystal rock. Pretty cool. I'm gonna try to scale down here get out on this point a little bit this uh little break here should make it so that i don't get hit by too many waves but if you've ever done this stuff before you'll know that this stuff is extremely slick so just be careful if you ever feel like coming out here and trying this jetty fishing just like that oh. see told you so it's all right that wasn't bad I have this here log to straddle me. All right, well, I'm just going with my twitching rod. I'm not gonna mess around. I'm just going with a three ounce laser minnow to start. That's pretty much a good guarantee to catch some kind of rock bass. I'm actually gonna pack my little gear box down here with me just in case I lose something like I almost did my line. And that's the worst part about this. You guys can see if I dropped it, it's down there into Davy Jones's locker way under the, the jetty here. So I'm gonna try to hold on to these things. So letting it just barely hit bottom. I want to try to keep this thing as long as I can, but just letting it barely hit the bottom, switching it on back. Oh, that was something. It feels really fishy out there. It feels like a sand bottom out in the middle. That's kind of the, the vibe I'm getting. The further out I go, the more sand it is. So I throw it out, it hits the sand, and then uh, I'm bringing it back about, I don't know, 20 yards or so, and then it's starting to hit a big rock shelf. So I'm gonna throw the old laser in the back end. I got a good feeling about the old white grub here. Got about a two ounce jig head. Ah! 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 One 
got me. Whoa. Didn't even see it coming. I was supplying the butt juice and I got hit by a sneaker. Oh, first cast. Got hammered. Just kidding. Better be careful with this one. This is the only jig head I have. Well, I think this is the first one to bite the dust. Let's see. How cool that pelican is. Man, I've always loved pelicans. They're such a cool looking dinosaurish bird. Oh, no, she gone. She gone. Okay, so I lost my first lure. About a half hour in, that's, uh, that's pretty done good. We're out here on the jetty. As you can see, it's kind of the same big rock structure you see on the bank underneath the water, so it can be a, a snaggy, snaggy nightmare. So I'm gonna start moving around. I'm gonna try the inland side of this jetty. A little bit calmer over here. Not quite as treacherous. The current's ripping out super hard out of the big river here. Uh, pulling a lot of current, so I'm guessing that any bait that got pushed into the bay during uh, during high tide might be kind of getting pushed back out right now. So this kind of poses a nice little ambush point for these fish, I'm thinking. So make our way down here. Not dying. Okay. Got my last jig head here. Store didn't have very many today, so we might have to rig something a little bit different. A little more wacky, but we'll do our best. So I can already tell it's much, much deeper on this side. Just gonna kind of get it in that current, butter it around here. That's fishy. Oh, that's fishy. I got something. Definitely got something. Not sure yet what I have on here, but it looks promising. Oh my God, lost it right at the rock. It was definitely a fish of some sort. Damn it. Okay, cast them a little bit further up into the current this time. Gonna let it hit. There's bottom. Just gonna slowly work it back, real small jigs. When you have that much line out, every time you do that little bit of a jig, a lot of the time you're pulling it way further than you really think you are. It's got a lot of resistance from the current, a lot of resistance from the jig itself. So just these small little choppy jigs. When you do it like this too, it makes it a little bit easier for you to detect the bottom. Doesn't give it as much time to fall down into the cracks and crevices. Oh my God, there was another one. Damn it. I'm guessing is these fish have really super hard mouths. So I think if I'm gonna be able to hook them, I'm gonna have to set the hook a little bit harder. I'm gonna go a little bit tighter on my drag. I need to set the hook a little harder on these things because I'm just kind of feathering them and it's not working. There was another bite. Oh, I'm gonna make, that's gonna make me mad. Got somebody's line down there. Okay, I busted that one off. I'm gonna go back to the laser minnow for a minute here. Seems like a fairly good choice. Oh, I just wanna get a couple couple for lunch. Doesn't have to be too many. Not too less. Not too many. Fish on. Fish on. Fish on. Yes. That's a good one. Okay, what do we got here? Looks like a really nice black. Oh my god, it looks like a really nice black rock. Oh man. Okay, delicate situation here. Okay, we're gonna do our best to get this up on the bank. I'm gonna try to put it right next to my backpack here. Got him, got him, got him, got him. Yes. All right. First one of the day. A little persistence. Definitely paid off. Got my little bonker with me here. Gonzo. Well, that's how it goes out here on the jetty. Well, I guess that's the way she goes sometimes. Had a really tight spot here. Dog was in the way. 
unhooked the fish, went to bonk it, slipped away from me and fell down in between the cracks back in the ocean. So whatever, we got time, we got all the time in the world. That was a perfect, that's exactly what we were looking for. So as you saw, I didn't really get a, a chance to explain it, but comment below with what you thought of that or whether that's happened to you before. I know I've heard stories of this uh, happening out here on the, on the jetty many, many times, but this is my first experience dropping one down there. So at least he was safe, at least he didn't die. Let's keep trying. There's a fish. Yeah, it's a bigger fish. Oh yeah, a big old crab, dude. Oh, it's just turning into a crab catching cook. Let's see. It's definitely a male. Got me a little dungy here. We might be adding to the catch and cook. Oh, I would be so excited. Cool, who knew? They're biting on the old laser minnow today. Cow, cow, cow. <laughs> All right, well, we found out this dungy's legal. It's a male. You can tell by the way it is right here. Normally the females will have a lot fatter undercarriage like that. You'll see it'll be like fat and round. The males have this nice skinny little piece right here and he's gonna get cooked here today at some point. So we're gonna stick him in the bag get back to fishing, try to get our rockfish for us. Well, our rips moved big time, kind of going to the other side of the jetty, so I'm gonna work my way over here. I tell you what, this brings a whole new meaning to not shitting where you eat. I don't think these seagulls got the memo. It stinks out here. So I'm gonna find my way through the maze here, get down to there, and cast it out into that rip line. And I think that's where we're gonna do the best. I got my little herring mooching set up ready here too. I got this two ounce lead, my little trailer hooks, little mooching set up. I might try some bait here for a second, in just a second, but first off, like I said, I got into this rip. This really seems to me like where it would be the fishiest here. Hands down, the very biggest surf perch I've ever seen in my life. Holy moly. He just crushed the jig. But again, they're sitting right out there in that little seam line out in the middle. So I'm going to put this guy on my little carabiner stringer here and uh, get back to fishing. There's a... Oh! Oh, we hammered it. Dang it, dang it, I just got hammered. That was way out there in the rip line. Right actually next to the bank. Really hard casting into the wind here. Just making it super difficult to detect bottom. Keep myself off these rocks. I'm scared now, because this is the last one that I have. Now that we got the surf perch, now that we scored a big surf perch here, we're gonna, there he got him, got him, got him, got him, got him. If I can get a, a rock bass here, we're gonna get right to cooking. We got a three course meal if that's the case. Oh, another surf perch. Come on, baby, stick with us. And it's so weird, because normally when guys are catching these surf perch, it's like, like actual bait and stuff. So it's really neat to be getting them on these jigs like this. And especially in the size, I've never, never seen surf perch so big. Wow, these things are so beautiful. All right, so another trophy surf perch. Some of the biggest ones I've ever seen. I've never even fished for them out here um, other than off the beach. And it's really cool because they're eating these steel jigs instead of having to rig up the little, the little sandworms and stuff like we normally would use for them. So I'll take what I can get. We got ourselves a legal dungy. We got two giant surf perch sent, uh, sent to rock bass down to old Davy Jones's locker. He got it back today. And, but I'm gonna keep trying. I might try some bait now. Now that we've caught a couple of fish, might go to some herring or some bait uh, and see see what we can make happen here.
God. fish on. Just bounce it through the rocks with the bait. I'm pretty sure this is a black. It's acting a lot more bassy than the last couple. I just really hope it stays on here. Oh my god, lost it right at the bank. Dang it! Well, the story of any jetty fisherman is I'm out of hooks. I'm out of jig heads. Other than this one, I guess I might be able to use. Out of jig heads, not out of plastics, out of bait. Pretty much used up all my resources here. But we got a couple of fish. I really wanted to do a three species catch and cook here. I'm still mad at Sean and Little for being in my way. It was off camera, I think, but I was yelling at him for our little mishap earlier when really we all know it's my fault. So that's the way the cookie crumbles, but we got a couple freaking beautiful. Look how big those freaking things are, man. I've never seen a surf perch that big. For a minute there, I was like, did I just catch a little mini GT? But we're gonna work our way back. I only got one hook set up left and try to get a link cod or a rock bass or something to end this off and get cooking for you guys. So stay tuned. We're gonna do some really wacky cool recipes as you saw in the, the thumbnail. We're gonna be doing a white cog batter again. One of my token recipes. Um, oh my God, I just saw a big old salmon jump. Anyways, but we're gonna do a special white claw crab uh, crab boil and then we're gonna do a special white claw beer batter for the surf perch and hopefully the one other species of fish so follow me along I'm gonna try not to die on the way out of here and we're gonna get eaten because I'm getting hungry it's about lunchtime oh yeah this looks like an awesome spot Look at that. right on the water set up gonzo beans oh well we had fun i don't know about you guys but we caught some fish we obviously had some opportunities we lost our third species for our catch and cook but we're gonna go have a delicious little shore lunch anyways our crab's starting to die so we don't want to let that thing get too dead we want to be able to boil it semi alive at least we got our perch let's go fillet those up and let's get some cooking going here made it through the hazard zone back to the truck now we're getting ourselves set up to get some cooking done had a little crap appetizer over here a little smoked salmon and cream cheese couldn't help myself but now we got our little dungy friend we got our surf perch here i actually think i'm going to cook this little guy first i want to save this big one for the thumbnail for you guys i'm going to display this little guy out and uh boil some water here let's actually let's get that going right now there we go we're gonna get this bad boy boiled up a little bit, but we're gonna throw another little twist at you. So the theme of this obviously is, a, is a more of a Mexican style. I'm gonna be making a fish taco, like I talked about in the beginning, making a little slaw here. It's all gonna be pretty crazy coming at you here. But I'm gonna use this natural lime flavor, one, in the boiling of my crab, and then two, with the batter, I got this all-purpose beer batter that I'm gonna add this natural lime to. That's what I'm actually gonna roll the fish in itself. But what I brought with me was some cilantro, I got some lime, I got a tomato. So what I'm gonna do first is get this crab prepped a little bit here. Get this thing ready to go. All I'm gonna do, and this thing just died. Normally I wouldn't recommend anybody eat dead crab, but this one had just perished, so it's not too big of a deal. I'm gonna break this, the back of his head off here, just like so. Ew, got all his brains. I'm gonna grab my little garbage thing here just so I don't be making a mess out here in the public area. Get all these gills out, all these guts. Break that in half. 
I like to just give it a good shake. Cleans all that bad stuff out. That guy's pretty much ready to go. Beautiful little dungy. I am so excited about that. Can't believe we scored that today. I'm actually gonna use this dungy in my slaw. So you see I have some coleslaw over here. Just some stuff already shredded from the store. Should make a really, really tasty meal. So now I got my little surf perchy here. I'm gonna get him filleted out. These things are pretty flipping tough. The skin's really tough and they're kind of bony. So I'm gonna do my best filleting this thing. I've never actually done one this big. I'm gonna do here is just because I don't have any water close to me I'm just gonna give this a little splashy splash don't want to do it too quick you want to do it really quick not too uh, too long in there because obviously you see how it already curled it up started cooking it so save my little pieces just doing that to sanitize basically all I'm gonna do with the slaw is I'm gonna take I don't know a pretty good hefty pinch of cilantro the nice part about doing this, I could have done this prior to coming out here, but I wanted to show you guys how easy it is to make. But I just do a little bit of cilantro in there. I'm gonna take this side of my Roma tomato, do a couple nice little slicey dices. Okay, our water's boiling. I'm gonna get this bad boy in there. And secret ingredient right off the top. After this starts to get boiling, I'm gonna add, I don't know, about a half can, just enough to give it some flavor. We're kind of looking for just that. Oh, that smells fantastic already. I think this is gonna work really nice. Just a little dash in there, some basil and some other things. Oh man. Ooh, ooh. I can already tell it's gonna taste like some poor man's lobster. Okay, so now my next step is gonna be going for my sour cream here. This is just Mexican style, normal sour cream. This works really good for making this slaw, nice and thick. I'm gonna go just a pretty good little dollop in there. You can always, again, everybody knows my motto, I think by now you can always add more, but you can't take it out. So I'm gonna go just to start getting that mixed up a little. Now the important part, I got just normal taco seasoning that I'm actually gonna use here. You can actually get a Chipotle mix or something from the store, but I'm just gonna use that actual taco seasoning there and give it a nice flavor. Oh God, that looks good. So this is gonna be my coating on my taco. I'm gonna give them a nice little spritz again with some lime. I'm gonna give that a nice little sprinkle with this, basically this is just garlic and herb and pepper. It doesn't have any salt in it. Don't really need to over salt this stuff. This has some great flavor to it anyways. Grab my Pride of the West batter here. I don't need too much. I only have two pieces of fish there, so that should be plenty. So the goal of this is, you know, this is the beer batter that I'm using, so I'm just substituting my beer for a seltzer beer and, and the lime flavor. The cool thing is you get the different flavors of this lime. I know I have buddies that live in Alaska that like to use like Alaskan amber ale or whatever that they dump into their pot when they go to boil their crab. Same with their with their beer batter, they use like a special kind of IPA or something. But I'm using the old White Claw trick. So I think I invented, I'm, if I didn't invent it, I was definitely there. So let's get this stuff good and mixed up. I went a little heavy on the claw there, I think. A little foamy. I want a pretty good little texture, like a like a half melted milkshake, is what I would call perfect. Let me get that right consistency. There it is. That's the old half melted milkshake. Let me just take that, toss it right into the batter. Give them a good little turning, a little churning, a little yearning. Put a big old, probably about a half cup of butter in there because I like butter. And now the rest is waiting. So what I'm gonna do now is once I take this, this uh, crab off, I'm gonna get my pan going, get my butter ready. I'm gonna crack this crab and actually put it in my slaw. Kind of use some of that body meat, get half of that crab cracked up in there, and then we'll be ready to go. And she's done. I'm gonna get this bad boy over here. I'm gonna add all that body meat and those few limb pieces into that slaw. Just take my, my fork here, good sturdy fork always helps. First thing I should try those is flavor. 
Oh yeah. Man, it really adds to the to that flavor, like of the sweetness almost. That like sweetness of the white claw it almost makes the meat sweeter. crab meat in there. It's gonna get it nice and broken apart, mixed on in. Man, this just itself could be a really good salad. Look at that. A little crabby slaw. Okay, our big fish is ready. The consistency that White Claw has made, that batter, is just so tacky and nice. This is the second time I've tried it. Uh, I was really excited to try this recipe because it was so much different and it was just a totally different flavor of White Claw. So if you guys like this, be sure to drop a comment below. Give me some ideas. What do you want me to see cook next with this White Claw recipe? There's all different flavors. I think most of you out there who've ever had them know what the different flavors are. But there's all sorts of options. There's all sorts of possibilities. And I'm gonna try to do something with every single flavor trying to cook something different with it, of some sort of wild game, some fish or something like that. So drop some comments below. If you like what I'm doing here, smash that thumbs up. And if you haven't already, get over here and subscribe down below, because you're not gonna wanna miss all these recipes that I have coming. So I'm gonna wait for this to go, get a nice golden brown on one side, I'm gonna flip it over, and then we're gonna get our tortillas ready. Mmm, get that nice little golden brown. I think these two little sampler pieces are probably ready to go. Hold on. I'm gonna do that again for you guys. Cause that's how I really felt about it. That is so beyond next level. I can't believe I just created this by myself. That is so unbelievably good. Mmm, got that nice little little black into it, nice little crisp. Oh my God. I wish you guys could experience that. It's like this, you can definitely taste that lime. I will say that much. That's like the best part of it I can taste so far is actually using that white claw. And I think using the white claw gives it that really airy, that really airy cook, that really airy shell that you're seeing there. Like you can see how it's almost puffy, like kind of like a pancake. Oh my God. There we go. I wanna hear that little bit of sizzle when I throw those in there. Okay, I think my top tortilla is ready to go here. I'm gonna lay my meat right in there. I'm gonna give myself a nice little healthy helping slaw on there. A little squirt of lime. Add to the flavors, just like that. A little tingle for the tongue. And you guys, what do you think? What do you think out there, world? How did we do? We had to work for it. There was some sweat, there was some tears, a little bit of blood, but it wasn't mine, it was the fishes. And now we get to enjoy this beautiful bounty from the ocean itself. Thank you so much, fish. Mmm, that shell turned out perfect. You know, you got that nice soft crunch, subtle crunch on the fish. You got the nice fresh slaw on there, that little spice, a little bit of tanginess, nice crunch from the, the tortilla, Get, got that done just right. And my goodness, some people might think it's gross, but I take a lot of pride in knowing that my food was kicking out there in the ocean less than about an hour ago. So I know I am absolutely in heaven. This is gonna be one of my new favorite recipes. If you didn't try it, use that lemon white claw on any kind of Mexican re recipe, any kind of batter recipe, anything that you think it might go good with. I thought it worked out great. And this is definitely gonna be one of my brand new favorite recipes. So look for more of these videos coming, more of these taste tests. And tell me, comment below with what you think this tastes like. I know I'm loving it right now. 
All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us on this adventure today. We really appreciate you being here. If you guys haven't already done so, be sure to drop some comments below on what you thought of today's episode. Definitely smash that thumbs up for us. And be sure to drop a comment below and interact with this video. Hit this little link up here if you wanna see some more videos on our channel. Go down here, smash that subscribe, turn that little bell notification on, and do not forget to comment below. We'll be picking the comment of the day out of this video. So thanks so much for tuning in, you guys. I'm gonna keep eating. You stay fishy and we'll see you out there.